Ireland could have gone different ways after independence. And it's clear that after a long interval of stasis, Ireland eventually moved decisively in the kettle direction, in the direction of globalization, embracing globalization. And that was accompanied by a new dynamism in the economy that allowed living standards to catch up with living standards in the UK and in the rest of Europe. The influence of Britain is still very strong, indirect influence, of course, but you see it in, in many ways. You see it, for example, in the labor market, in the way unemployment has moved down much more rapidly in this crisis than in the rest of Europe because of the close labor market connections with Britain where unemployment has been low as well. But you also see it in other dimensions, cultural links, business links, indeed the bubble that, uh, that grew in the, in the early 2000s was very much paralleling a, a, a similar developments, though less dramatic, in Britain, and there was a demonstration effect. So lots of influences from Britain still present in the Irish economy. The Irish economy is one of the most globalised economies in the world. It has engaged with globalisation relatively successfully, despite the big crisis that we've just had. One of the risks with globalisation is that you your economy can become a kind of monoculture, relying on whatever is working now in relation to the global economy. It was property for a while, it's uh, tax-based multinational corporations at another time. This is what we need to guard against, undue reliance on single types of economic development and a diversification because the world out there, the global world, including Britain, our neighbors, offer many diverse opportunities. Mm -hmm.